Ready? Ready. Go. All right. Welcome to this edition of the Crawl USA podcast. I'm Scott. I'm Jason. Today, we're going to talk about spare tires. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a little personal. No, I'm triggered. It happens. All right. Spare tires, right? I see a lot of people run them. I see a lot of people not run them. Right, so you just start with the basics. Do you run one? I do not. Yeah. Uh, why don't you run a spare tire? Well, a um, couple reasons. Weight is a, is a big one. You know, my spare probably weighs 160 pounds. And I didn't know it was a competition. Mine probably only weighs about 125. Yeah, well... Um, there's the the amount of room it takes up. There are various ways to to carry them, but we're also wheeling a lot of places where places you're going to lose a tire are not very good places to change a tire. So, and I think it's just experience, you know, getting comfortable with with tire repairs, seeing that they're effective in many cases. And don't get me wrong, I have a spare, but it's back at the trailer. It's not it's not with me on the trail. It's just too much. So it question just on that, would if let's say it didn't weigh. Let's say a spare, same size forty two on a seventeen inch rim bead lot. Let's say it weighed twenty five pounds. Do you care? Same space it's going to take up. Maybe. Could it? Would it fit? Would it fit in the back of your Jeep? I mean, the roll cage, like like mm-hmm. Trongs is. Would it fit that way? I'd have to figure out a mount that would. It won't fit in the tub. No. Like if you took everything out, it wouldn't fit. Not with your current setup. Like if you had space, same roll cage. Yeah, maybe behind the. The wheel wells. You know, standing up. Oh, standing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you feel, though, when you first started, it was almost a stigma not to have a tire? Uh, not, uh, like, if you didn't have a spare tire, you weren't prepared? Yeah, but when I started, I, I didn't think I was going to get into rock crawling. You know, and I was doing easy trails. And, but the minute you start hanging that spare up on stuff, And you have to make a decision. It's kind of like anything else that is interfering with your clearance on the trail. You have to make a decision. Am I going to drop my trail ratings down a notch or I'm going to start taking parts off this thing so that I don't get hung up? Uh, we've, we've seen some videos, though, where a spares actually kept someone from going over. It's true, right? Yeah. So that's something. Uh what what was the point? Do you know the point or remember the point other than weight, unless it was just weight, of when and why you took your spare off? Or was there a main reason why? So I'll give you mine. And, right? So I couldn't, like I was, for a while my Jeep had a real problem lifting the front driver wheel, right? Remember when I'd come up on things, it'd really get sketchy. And to me, having that extra weight back there was not helping that problem at all. And that's kind of when I decided to get rid of my spare for safety and to keep my wheel from coming quite as high. I remember that when I did it is when I started running um, 39-inch tires, the Reds. Took up a, a lot of space. It's friggin' heavy. And at that point, gone through enough sidewalls and tire changes and shit on the trail that, you know, we had, we had one friend that I think we saw him for over a year running a tire with a plug in it. Yeah. You know, every time we see him on the trail, and so 
I got comfortable with that idea. I ran with a, a plug tire for a long time. You know, it works. So Yeah, I did too. I ran those 37s with so that I, plug. But back to the original question, yeah, I mean, it, it feels irresponsible. If you, you know, I'm from the last century. And if you've traveled, you know, before cell phones, before, you know, uh, yeah, you wanted to spare everything. You carried a set of tools, and you didn't want to be caught without things that were prone to failure. And so, you know, that's kind of ingrained in everybody, I think, is they want to be prepared for, for whatever. But if you're out wheeling with a bunch of uh, rigs on a, say you're running a five-on-five five bolt pattern, and there's you're running with five or six other people that are running the same pattern, right? There's less risk. Just one of them is carry your spare. <laughs> it's like a high lift jack. Somebody's going to have one. I don't need to carry one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The more people you work with, the more tools that are involved. Um, yeah, I think I think now we're pretty comfortable with plugs without a problem, right? Like we'll plug anything at this point if we can. Um, you know, I'm excited. We've seen the video, um, or at least the ad, right, of the glue tread, and that looks pretty promising. I've seen it used a bunch. Have you? I haven't seen yeah. one used. I don't think. Mm. So, I don't know. I haven't had to use it, but yeah, we carry it, right? But uh, we haven't had to use it yet. Um, you know, is there? I guess you know. I guess there's not really. I think for weight reduction and space, right? If you're wheeling with another enough people, I don't. I guess there's not really any type of pitfall or anything for not carrying a spit. Right, like there's enough, like you just said, there's enough people that'll carry one unless you have a real unique bolt pattern. Uh, but man, we've just found people that have done it enough that they can just plug those things and keep going. Um, and to be fair, we're talking about rock crawling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, if you're overlanding, that's a different story. Thing. You want to make sure, <laughs> you know, because then that that rule is, you know, two is one, one is none, definitely comes into play. Right. So yeah. if I were driving you know, through uh, the chain of craters or something, some long-ass trail, hole in the rock. Okay, so that's a good example. If we were to run hole in the rock again, the way we're currently built with all the stuff in it, there's no way I can get a spare in mine. I don't think I'd run it with this build. I, You know, if we were going to run that trail again, I'd probably rent a... A mostly stock Jeep. And, oh, and run it and, that way. In Moab. There's no reason to take this rig out on a trail like that. Yeah, it's long, to yeah. Go camping. You know. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Just it's a cool trail. I mean it's definitely Just don't take your vehicle and run a new one. Yeah. But you can you can make a trail in a a stock ring. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. That's it's a personal decision I guess everybody has to make. Um, you know, I think if, like you said, if you're overlanding, definitely have to have one. Uh, I think if you will with enough people and enough groups, probably pretty fine not to take one if you need space for something else. Um, a cooler. I mean, if you have to decide between spare and a cooler, I don't know. I think the cooler wins. wins. That's not much of a... you got to eat. Yeah, I gotta eat. Yeah, we'll say eating. Nothing else in that cooler but food. Um, all right. So, yeah, I think you know. I'll be honest. I thought we were gonna go a little bit more into tires, but I don't know what else there is to say. But if you want to see something else about tires and stickies, check out our other podcast. Uh, we have that about Reds versus Treps. There is one other thing. Oh, good. I think we should say about not carrying a spare. Yeah. If you're not gonna carry a spare. Make sure you have tire repair stuff. And make sure you know how to use it. I'd also say if you're not going to carry your spare, don't carry your high lift. Maybe we can explore that later. All right. That sounds like a plan. All right. All right. That's it for today. Thank you again uh, for listening. We still have our sticker board up there. Let us know if you want to send us a sticker, like, subscribe, all that stuff. 
put comments in. If you want to hear us ramble on about something else, we'll be happy to do that. Thank you very much, and we'll see you out on the trail. Adios.